Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to you all. And thank you for joining us here for the next installment in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series. Fantastic to see you all here. Fantastic to see such a global audience joining us here for the live session, or if you're watching this later on uh, demand on YouTube, it's great to have you along. And uh, today we're going to talk about trading with the 20 period moving average. Um, as always, okay, I appreciate that we have a, a broad range of experience of people who join us for the sessions or watching this from complete beginners to people who've been trading for many years. So it'd be fascinating to hear in the chat box there what, if any, experience you have of trading using the 20 period moving average. Maybe you're not even aware of what a 20 period moving average is. Maybe it's part of uh, your own particular uh, analysis or trading skills. Either way, it'd be fascinating to hear how you uh, how you look to uh, interpret it. Uh, and as always, we appreciate that you know, this has been a uh, rather tumultuous year here at 2020. And um, we uh, Admiral Markets here hope that you're all uh, you're all home and safe and well. And appreciate you joining us for uh, this as part of your own particular trading journey. So, what's on the agenda for today, ladies and uh, gentlemen? Well, we're going to talk about well, you know. Why is the 20 MA of interest to traders? You know, what you know, what makes it different or special to anybody else? Uh, and what we're going to talk about is how can we use it for both trends and reversals, right? I'm going to sort of share with you that today, okay, about how we could use it for trading trends and also for reversals. And then, you know, if there's time at the end, we'll have a look at how does it play out in live markets. We'll just have a little look for a few ideas and opportunities and examples uh, and to see how that uh, how that plays out for us. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Paul. I've traded for many years. Okay, I've traded for funds and for uh, other individuals, and uh, you know, coached many traders for many years. So, uh, primarily uh, in my own style of trading, okay, I look to focus on FX indices and commodities, uh, and primarily I'm looking to trade dominant trends in the uh, kind of swing and longer term positions, uh, and be more of a mean reversal and reversion uh, reversal trader on the intraday basis. And here at Admiral Markets, as you can see, they're you know, a, a Forex and CFD broker that provide a wide range of financial instruments. Uh, they're licensed and regulated in a wide range of regulatory environments across the uh, globe, providing competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products uh, and giving the opportunity to engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5. Uh, and if you have any questions about Admiral Markets, please get in touch with the account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. So today, let's talk about trading with the 20 period moving average. And as I said, it's interesting to know, you know, what if anybody has uh, um, experience of, uh, of trading that, okay? So it's uh, it's great to sort of uh, have your uh, own thought and own your, your uh, uh, sort of uh, your own views, okay? So as I said, some people will be well aware of it, others people completely new. So, you know, <clears throat> what I see then, you know, talking from personally in my personal experience, but also, you know, here at Admiral Markets, is that we often see many new traders overcomplicate their trading systems, uh, which actually leads to degraded performance. Uh, very often they feel that having more indicators on their charts will help their decision making, whereas the reality is that it often leads to analysis paralysis. So in today's session, we'll look at how you can trade the markets using a simple 20 period moving average. And it is absolutely true that, okay, you know, I see, you know, lots of new traders charts, they send me their, their charts, okay, and uh, telling me, you know, Paul, you know, I'm really struggling to, to work out how to trade, I can't really make a decision on, you know, what I should do, what do you think of my charts? Uh, and I look at their charts, and, and I can't make a decision on what to trade, because they can't even actually see the price, because there is about... 25 different moving averages and there'll be Keltner channels and Bollinger Bands and there'll be the CCI and the RC, uh, RSI, okay, and then the Stochastic, then a MACD as well, uh, uh, you know, and so they've got about 30 different overlays on their particular chart. And what actually happens is that they think that by having one more indicator, one more indicator, one more indicator, that it will make them safe. Okay, that it will secure the fact that they you know they can't be when all these all these 30 different indicators line up that they can't be wrong. But the reality is it rarely ever works out that all the 30 of them line up. And even when they do, that trade can still fail. Okay. That trade can still fail. Uh, and very often they might even take the trade because there's just so much information. And you know, they, they just have this analysis paralysis. They're like the deer in a headlight. Okay. Uh, and you know, and it's, a, it's a natural human phenomenon that, okay. And you know, and uh, you know, I was guilty of it myself at the start of my trading career. You know, we, we overcomplicate it, especially men. Okay. We think to ourselves, oh, it can't be this simple. You know, we need to add more to it. We need to add more to it. We need to add more to it. Whereas these days, you know, what I tell people for their own trading is actually less is more. 
All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Less is more. You want it to keep it as simple as possible so you can identify, you know, what phase the market's in, whether it's, you know, consolidating or whether it's trending or whether it's reversing. Uh, and then basically be able to have, you know, a simple decision framework. OK, that just allows you to make one of those simple decisions. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller or am I going to sit on my hands? That's it. Keep it nice and simple. OK, so, you know, as part of that, it's saying you know, we'll talk about, you know, uh, um, how to do that just using a, a simple 20 period moving average. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully it'll give you a little bit of insight into how you could make things very simple uh, and also just the ability to sort of just join trends and, and trade reversals. And uh, and that's uh, that's what we're going to cover today. And it's great to see you all here. Thanks for all those. Uh, thanks there. Nice to see you again, Ronald. Vincenzo, huge host at Yomi. Sounds like you had a great morning trading. I'm chuffed to bits for you, okay? That's great, okay? So uh, I'm really pleased and, uh, yeah, great to have you here today with us. And, uh, you know, look forward, to, look forward to helping and sharing some ideas with you. So what we're going to talk about, as I said, is trading with a 20 period moving average. Now, uh, you know, if you go onto social media these days, okay, and I'm sure you all do, all right, I'm sure you're all connected and linked into that. What you'll find is that, you know, moving averages get a very bad rep these days in trading, okay, because, you know, the, they're always, people are always looking for something new, people are always looking for something exciting, okay, you know, sharp, okay, and so you'll find that people will want to just focus on trading using things like, you know, market structure or supply and demand, okay, or just particular levels or just particular patterns and that's absolutely fine one of the glorious things about trading is that you know there are many many ways to do it and actually the key thing is about finding what is the best way for you all right that is actually the key element and finding a way that you can trade that is simple and easy and most importantly that you can repeat with flawless execution is more important than anything else. You've probably heard me through lots of these sessions that I've uh, delivered and given that, you know, is that, you know, it's about finding the right way for you. And actually it's about keeping it simpler rather than actually making it more overcomplicated. Okay. Nice, simple, easy way that you can trade day in, day out. Okay. That invariably allows you to sort of just consistently execute a plan when it comes to the market. So as I said, moving averages sometimes get a bad rap these days. However, they can be very, very useful, okay? But they're useful only when used correctly. Uh, and what I mean by that is very often when people come to, to trading to begin with, they like to look at using moving averages because they're quite a visual uh, representation, okay? And the vast majority of traders, okay, whether it be professional or retail, are, are male and, and male are very visually driven, okay, in all sorts of spheres of their life. So they think that moving averages and trading moving average crossovers is going to provide them with a very nice, simple, easy visual trading uh, opportunity. Truth is, you know, trading moving average crossovers, okay, is fine in a great trending market. The problem is that you probably like to give it all back during the whipsaws in a in a consolidating or range bound market. So let's bring up the old uh, trusty drawing tool here, okay? Uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, okay? So I uh, I ask your forgiveness with my some of my squirrels on the chart. Hopefully, you get the gist of what I'm trying to get across to you. So. You know, ignore moving average crossovers as a uh, as a trading kind of signal. OK, um, you know what you'll find that for those of you completely new, uh, you know, they might say, well, OK, Paul, what's going on here? You know, there's a there was a moving average crossover here. And, you know, if actually, you know, if I'd have bought it by the time it had crossed over, well, you know, I could have done really, really well. And that's absolutely true. And that is absolutely true. But as I said earlier. They only tend to work in really good, strong trending markets. And when they do, what happens is you tend to give it back in, in a consolidation markets. OK, so, you know, uh, moving averages are very useful, but trying to use them as a moving average crossover trending. OK, as a, as a trade signal, do yourself a favor. OK, you can you can move on from that. They're, they're not necessarily helpful. But what they are very useful as is providing dynamic support resistance, an indication of the strength of the trend. Uh, and also what we're going to use a little bit today is confirmation of the end of the trend. So what does dynamic support and resistance mean? Well, dynamic support and resistance is the opposite of static support and resistance. So a static support resistance might be a horizontal level, okay, that you've drawn in. Might be something like a big round number, okay? So for pound against US dollar, for most of sort of September of this year, 130 was a big round number. That was a static level, okay? That ain't, that ain't moving and price reacted to that. By the very nature of it being called dynamic support resistance, that means there is a change, there is a move. And what you find is that moving averages can be very, very useful as levels of dynamic support resistance. Even if we just look in here and you came, you know, these charts are very simple. Okay. I have a, a 20 
the blue is always a 20 period moving average the red is always a 50 and a green is a 200 uh, and hopefully what you can see is that you know once those moving averages were aligned well actually okay just look at how price bounced off that 20 period moving average there okay and there's three three ways that that price just bounced off that 20 period moving average it acted as dynamic support okay it kept updating as the moving average updates for every period but you can still see that actually acted as as interesting and useful dynamic support so why would that be paul you know why why is that why why is that useful well you've got 20 to 20 period moving average the 21 period moving average you know is kind of equivalent to the amount of trading days you might get in a month okay especially if you're trading on the daily chart you know there might be 28 to 31 days a month but as a rule of thumb we're normally operating on around about 20 to 21 trading days a month ago by the time you've taken out weekends bank holidays etc what you'll also find especially on this kind of daily charts the higher time frame is that there are quite a lot of buy and sell programs that just simply trade off the 20 period moving average in that area as as i said as an area of dynamic support and resistance so they'll just be very very simple buy and sell programs that basically buy the 20 period moving out when price drops into it from above or sell it okay as price rises up into it from beneath okay and that's you know that's that's just them just doing very simple buy and sell programs that can be very useful information for us to know so Vincenzo says he likes to use Bollinger Bands, which includes the central moving average. It works. That's true. But, you know, the standard setting for Bollinger Bands is around the 20 period moving average. You're absolutely right, Vincenzo. OK. And, uh, you know, we have some uh, great videos. I think I've done a few and I'm pretty sure my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, have done one or two as well on trading with Bollinger Bands. And you'll find those in the webinar archive. And that's based around the 20 period moving average. But today we're just going to take it even simpler. All right. And just be looking at the 20 period moving average um, itself. Claudia says, you know, they use uh, the uh, Bollinger Bands and the 20 period moving average as well. That's all great to hear. And but as I said, by all means, feel free to check out the webinar in the archive section. But, you know, as I said, moving averages for us, dynamic support resistance, indicators of the strength of the trend, confirmation of the end of the trend. That's what we're particularly interested in. So as I've said there, for the most part, I'm using the 20 period moving average blue, the 50 period moving average, which is red, and the 200 period moving average, which is green. Uh, I use simple moving averages, all right? But uh, for what we're going to discuss today, it, it actually doesn't terribly really matter whether you're trading simple or, or using simple or exponential moving averages. Uh, and if you want to know what the difference, well, I suggest you join our session on Wednesday when my colleague Marcus, he's going to be talking about exponential moving averages personally for me i'm quite happy just using simple moving averages it works perfectly fine for what i'm doing with regards to uh, using the 20 period moving average here so let's have a look at joining a trend okay this is going to be a trend joining uh, um, uh, strategy for you that you can take away uh, and it's called the 20 period moving average mechanical entry all right the mech entry you'll hear me talking about it and what it is, is I'm just looking for a simple way to join an existing trend. All right. That's the key thing, an existing trend, not just trading this willy nilly, but actually it has to be demonstrating an existing trend. Simple setup, simple execution. Um, it's viable across all time frames because I appreciate we have everyone in our room for people who trade monthly charts, trade one minute charts. But I use primarily this on the four hour chart. OK, but, you know, it actually works across all the time frames. It is time frame and instrument agnostic. And that's um, that's what we're looking at today. So what we're looking for in terms of its simplest setup is that we're going to use the 20 period moving average and the 50 period moving average. All right. Which is the red one, as you can see on my uh, charts there for a buy. OK, here's for here's what has to happen for a buy price on the daily chart has to be above its 50 period moving average okay just make a note of that price on the daily has to be above its 50 period moving average and then when i look down onto the price on the four hour price on the four hour should be above the 20 period and the 50 period moving average and also price is making higher highs and higher lows we are demonstrating that it is actually in a trend and as you can see there on this chart here we can see that's just this it will be a four hour chart and we can actually see that price is just above the uh, 20 and the 50 and you can see that it is actually making its way up in a uh, in a standard uptrend price is making higher highs and higher lows so 
Remember what I said, the simplest setup, four hour chart, price should have been above the 20 and 50 period moving average. And then price then retraces beneath the 20 period moving average. Okay. And by beneath, what we mean is actually beneath it and closes. Okay. Not just taps it and goes, but actually retraces and closes beneath point, uh, beneath the 20 period moving average, which is point X in this particular chart. Let's get the old tool. So, you know, we have been in an uptrend. Price is making higher highs, higher lows. We can see that actually the 20 is crossed the, uh, the, the 50 there. And then what actually happens is price retraces and it actually closes okay beneath the 20 and also the 50 but it's the 20 that we're interested in but then what we see is over the next couple of bars is that price then rallies and closes okay it closes back above the 20 period moving average okay back above all right and so this this is our trigger bar okay this is our trigger bar we're in an uptrend price has retraced and price now recloses back above that 20 period moving average. That's our trigger bar. And what we do is we buy the open of the next candle. Okay. That's what we're looking to do. When that candle closes and it's make sure it's closed, not just traded, but actually that's, you know, and this, although I primarily looking at four hour charts, you might want to sort of, you know, test how that works on other time frames. But as a general rule, four hours back above that 20 period moving average closes. Okay. That's your trigger bar. Okay. Hopefully that is, hopefully that's nice, simple, almost mechanical for you. Clues in the name, ladies and gentlemen, right? It's the mechanical entry. And that's what we want just using very, very simple, okay? Moving average, simple price action to give us a kind of a simple way to just get back it, to join what we believe is an existing trend. This has just been a pullback in an existing trend and we are looking to rejoin it. So, as I said, once, as you can see there, candle one, once price has closed beneath the 20 period moving average and then rallies again and closes back above the 20 period moving average, that's your trigger bar. And you're looking to buy the open of the next candle and why you place your stop loss, because remember, we're always trading with a stop loss. Managing risk is you know, crucially important. We place our stop loss beneath the low of the last two bars, okay? So we've had bar one, all right, here, the bar two, uh, and we place our stop loss beneath the low of the last two bars. Now, you know, this is a particular case, as that's mechanical, you can do that. But also, you know, if, if for example, in this case, you see that, you know, the, the, the bar before is also a little bit lower, well, you know, you may wish to put your stop loss beneath there, okay, on that particular case, that would be an element of subjectivity that, you know, might come with a bit of experience. So to begin with, to start with traders, just place your stop loss beneath the low of the last two bars. That's what we're looking to. So we know where we're getting in. And we know where we're getting out if, if we're wrong, because the trade could fail. Every trade opportunity could fail. But this is just simple and easy uh, you know, to actually get you into a, a join an existing trend. So what are our exits, though? Okay? You know, so we know where we're getting out when we're wrong. Okay? We also want to know, you know where we get out when we're fortunate to be right. Uh, and here I'm going to offer you a little, bit of, um, a little bit of an option because I appreciate some traders, like myself, like to have a target in place to hit. But other traders like to trail their stops to try and sort of think that they can garner as much profit from it, the trade as possible. And so I'm going to offer you that opportunity. So, you know, your exits are quite simple. You can either just do a, a one and a half reward, okay, against your risk, which, of course, your trade risk is effectively, you know, the price you got in plus the, uh, the price of your stop losses, and then effectively extrapolating that one and a half times forward, which works out sometimes around about, you know, the kind of the 261 Fibonacci extension of, of that particular, the, the range of your trade risk. But I appreciate the case, some people may not understand Fibonacci completely, but so if you know where your price you're getting in, you know where the price you're getting out if you're wrong, and then being able to times that by one and a half, that will give you your target, okay? And that can allow you to have a target to hit with your trade. Or, as I said, if you wish to basically uh, trail your stop to run your trade, well, then you can utilize a three bar trailing stop. So what does that actually imply? That means that every time a candle completes on your four hour chart, that effectively your stop loss moves beneath the low of the last three candles. OK, very simple, quite mechanical suits the kind of name that's what we're trying to do keep it as simple as possible not trying to sort of uh, try and be rocket scientists or try to sort of outsmart ourselves okay we're just looking to do that so if i just draw a tool here let's get the old drawer tool up here so you know we know where our entry is in 
And, you know, we know our initial stop is beneath 0.2. Every time the candle completes, it completes here, click. We look at, you know, where is the, our stop stays beneath the low of the last three candles, which in that case is there. The next candle runs and then that candle closes. And we look back at what is the low of the last three candles. Well, then it's our stop moves just beneath the low of there. The next candle occurs. It closes here. And what do we do is we look back one, two, three, and we notice that our stop loss is moving here, just beneath the low of the last three candles. When this candle then completes, completes here, well, this is candle one, candle two, candle three, and our stop loss moves here now, just beneath the low of the last, the low of the last three candles. And now, you know, our stop loss is way above where our entry was. So, you know, we're in profit. Whatever happens to this trade now, we know we'll be taking some profit. When the next candle completes, basically, same old pattern, one, two, three. So our stop loss moves here. The next candle, this candle completes. Well, we look back and actually the low of that candle is, is the lowest of the last three candles. And then as the next candle opens, we're triggered out and we're taken out there for a profitable trade. So very, very simple, just effectively a simple three bar trailing stop that allows you to just effectively stay with the trend. And if the trend is a strong trend, that may allow you to, to generate a, you know, a very handsome profit on your trade. And also it can be sometimes easy for traders who are maybe struggling with a little bit of discipline. What you can do is by doing something like a trailing three bar stop, it forces you to effectively follow the discipline of that trade and just you know, work with that trade in terms of you know, understanding your proper trade management. So I hope that uh, makes sense to you. I hope that gives you a little bit of idea of how you can actually work. Uh, and here's just a, a few examples. This is the pound against the Aussie dollar here. Okay. So you, you know, we can see that, you know, price has been making, okay, higher highs, higher lows. Okay. Price has been in a nice uptrend. We can see here the 20 is above the 50 and also above the 200. Uh, and we can see that price actually, you know, it, it comes back, it retraces, closes beneath the 20. And then about three bars later, it closes. Here we go. Click. It's closed back above the 20 period moving average. So that's where we're buying the next thing you know, the next candle opens or stop goes beneath the low of the last two. And, you know, regardless of whether you trailed your uh, stop or whether you had a, uh, had a probably a target around about here, I'd say about one and a half. Well, then the trade was a, the trade was a profitable trade. You know, this is just a way, a mechanical way for you to enter. Okay. A, an existing trend. Okay. And hoping that that's invariably that kind of that trend continues and that it will carry your position upwards. Uh, and alternatively, what we have here is a, you know, a couple of examples. And I you know, put this in for a bit of difference. This is a pound against Canadian dollar. Uh, we can see that actually you know, the 20 is above the 50. Price is above the moving averages. It's, it's rallying away. And then actually it falls back hard, doesn't it? Retraces beneath the 20 period. And then we get a really big candle, which takes us back above the 20. Okay, This is you know, a big bullish engulfing. It's a key reversal candle. Uh, and we can see that actually price moves its way. It then next time it just closed just by a mere sliver under the 20 period moving average. And then the next candle closes back above it. And that is your opportunity to, to enter. Okay. Again to again, price rallies and then it falls and gets back down beneath the 20 period moving average. But once again, you can see price rallies and then closes back above the 20 period moving average. The trade is on stop is beneath the last of the low two and the price continues. Remember, you know, uh, no trend, no trend just goes like this. A trend always has a bit of a zigzag on it, okay? That's what's always happening. So, you know, you have to be prepared to recognize that this is what we're hoping to do is just to, as the trade, you know, as the trend, it, you know, starts to build its strength, it will always have a little bit of a retrace because there's always somebody somewhere taking profits. And then as that trend re-exerts itself, we want to get back on board. We want to get back on as a surf and get back on and surf that, that wave for us. Uh, and this is, you know, just now this is, you know, you can see there's kind of lots of four hour examples on the uh, on the sterling charts. Um, price is quite clearly in a uh, nice uptrend. We can see here it closes beneath the blue 20 period moving average, goes down a couple of candles. And then what happens is it turns around. OK, turns around here, closes back above and the trade is on and our stop is beneath the low. OK, of the two candles before we let that trade uh, carry on. Uh, in this example, what we're looking at is the, the 20 and the 50 and the 200. Yep, there is another uh, sort of slightly older, slower moving average, but 
for the purposes of this, all we're interested in is the is really is the 20 and the 50. Those, those are the main moving averages that we're looking to focus on for this. Uh, and this is, you know, these are just more examples of, you know, where we see a you know, kind of price getting above. Here we go. Price is a uh, is above again okay, the uh, the the twenty and the fifty. It's in then we pull back. We actually effectively it closes beneath, then closes above. But if you were to take that trade right into the two hundred, that trade would fail. But then actually the trade sets up again. The trade sets up again, and we move ourselves nicely up. Price retraces, then effectively closes back above before it goes again. And then what we can see here, which leads us on to our next session, is that. Price retraces back beneath the 20, then actually it comes back. And actually, although it closes above it, what happens is the trend is over. That trend has now moved over. And that's actually what makes up the next part of this particular webinar, being able to sort of utilize the 20 to carry on joining the trend, but also to give us an indication when that trend is over and be able to use that in our own trading decisions. So, Here's uh, an example on, this is the euro against the Kiwi dollar here. And, you know, we can see that 20 has crossed the 50. So the price is, you know, price is in a nice downtrend. It's beneath the 20, it's beneath the 50. Price pulls back. We can see actually price closes above the 20. Then it recloses beneath the 20. So you'll be entering there with your stop there. But actually price continues to retrace a little bit. And I think your stop might just be taken, might just be taken out there before what happens is price falls again and closes beneath the 20. The next trade is on, trade is on. Then what happens again is that actually it closes once again beneath it before we see the move down. Price retraces, gets above the 20 period moving average, and then it effectively gets closes back beneath the 20 before price, uh, uh, price follows through and carries on until that trend is ended by a key reversal bar. So just, you know, just sharing sort of different examples of actually how the trade can run and can play out. What we're looking for is just really effectively identification of a trend price in the, for the short side, nicely beneath the sort of 20 and 50 period moving average. Every time it pulls above the 20, we're interested. Then once it reasserts itself, comes back beneath it, that's where our trade trigger is in place. Uh, and these are just uh, sort of more examples of here that, you know, to show you how you can do it, because invariably what we're looking to do is, you know, we are looking to join what might be a very good dominant trend. You don't know that when that trend sets up, you have effectively just got to take the trade. But what we do know is, you know, when we have a nice 20, then when the price is beneath the 20 and the 50 and the, the moving averages are all, all in a nice fan moving in, uh, moving in relation together, well, then that actually just sets up as a, as a very nice trend that we want to find a way to actually just join and get on board. So just uh, two kind of little caveats, okay, that just to, to help new traders, if the trigger bar is, is exceptionally large, okay, well then what you might want to do is to either give the trade a miss because the trade risk might be just too uh, big or look for a possible retrace of between 30 to 50% of that bar for a possible entry. But, you know, for, for complete new traders, what I'd be saying is if the bar is, you know, exceptionally large. So for example, like, uh, for example, like this one here, okay, that's an exceptionally large bar relative to the others. Well, for new traders, I'd say, just give that a miss, just maybe paper trade that until you have the, uh, so until you have the skills of analyzing the market to, to recognize, you know, whether that trade will just continue in the direction that um, that you know that that the trend is uh, taking us. So that was about how to join a, a uh, an existing trend. Uh, now we're going to look at the flip side of that. Okay, just using the what I call the power of twenty as a trading tactic to to recognise when that trend is over, and in fact there is a reversal in play, and that's actually what we're looking for here. So what we're looking at here is you know. Preferably, once a market has printed a reversal pattern, well, then, then we can now use the 20 period moving average as a possible confirmation of that reversal, confirmation that that existing trend is now over and that actually a new trend is about to take place. We watch to see how price wrecked to the 20 period moving average after the reversal pattern. And we're asking, does the 20 period moving average provide either dynamic support or resistance? Something we talked about, you know, right at the start, okay, with the slides there. Uh, and so this is an example of, you know, I think this might actually have been the DAX, if I remember rightly, is that a case of a trade there is hopefully you can see that price has actually been coming down, it cut rallies up, 
it actually, you know, in this case, the 20 period moving average acts as dynamic resistance. Uh, price goes down again, and then it makes a double bottom. Hopefully, there I'll just clear it. Hopefully, you can see we get a reversal pattern of a double bottom. Okay. Then what actually happens is we find that you know price eventually starts to get above. Okay. It gets actually above the 20 period moving average and starts closing. And then in this particular case, it hits this line of resistance, this 50 period moving average. But what kind of interests us is you can see here the 20 period moving average has been sloping down, confirming okay that the downtrend. But what we start to see is actually we start to see the 20 period moving average is starting to bend, it's starting to turn. We can also see that you know there's clearly starting to be reaction around that 20 period moving average. And what we can see is here in this particular first case is that as price comes back down to the 20, whereas here the 20 period moving average was acting as dynamic resistance, now it's starting to act as dynamic support. And you can see that that dynamic support happens. Yes, price does push down to the 20 period moving average, but it can't close beneath it. Furthermore, that 20 period moving average is now sloping up. So we've had a reversal pattern followed by the 20 period moving average flipping, okay, from being resistance to support. And then we're also starting to get, as hopefully you can see, we're starting to get rejection candles. We're starting to get pin bars, okay, giving the information that price is likely to swing up, okay? That downtrend is now over. We are definitely on the uh, up leg uh, and we'd want to position ourselves accordingly. So we look to see if the 20 period moving average acts as either a new roof for shorts or as a new floor for longs. And when that 20 period moving average acts a significant dynamic area of interest, then we can have confidence to trade in the direction of the reversal. OK, as I said, we want to see a reversal pattern. Even better if we start to see the 20 period moving average starting to go from being dynamic resistance in this case, starting to change and flip and turn around until we now start to see its dynamic support, okay? Price, whilst it touches it, price can't actually close beneath the 20 period moving average. That 20 period moving average is, is now the floor, okay? Remember what I was saying right at the start, there's quite a lot, okay, of buy and sell programs, just very simple buy and sell programs that will trade around that 20 period moving average. And all we're doing here is that this is just giving us information that actually that downtrend is over. We've got a reversal pattern. We're getting confirmation of that reversal pattern is a true reversal, and price is likely to drift its way up. And that's that's what we're uh, that's what we're keen to explore. So once we see the power of the twenty period moving average, then we can utilize any of the price action setups we've previously discussed as trade setups. So that could be in this particular case, could be pin bars, okay, could be maybe an engulfing candle, could be a domino candle, could be you know any any kind of simple price action um, setup that comes through after that. Well, then that just gives us the, you know it's almost like the trigger, okay, that allows us to to effectively sort of just get on board what we believe will be the new trend. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a, just an example here, okay? This is actually the, the Nikkei, okay, on the uh, four-hour chart. Uh, and actually what you can see, I mean, you can see quite clearly, you know, the price was in a, a very nice downtrend there, okay? Uh, it actually gave us a bit of a, a mechanical entry there if you were trading, watching along with that. Uh, and then what we see here is, you know, price comes down to the, what at that time is the 21,000 level. Uh, and what we can see here is, okay, price puts in, hopefully you can see that price comes in a very big double bottom before it's, launch itself up and now we see price has for the first time closed above the 20 period moving average let me just clear this up a little bit price closes above the 20 period moving average there doesn't it then closes up the next time but what we can see is that you know it tried to push down but actually it couldn't close beneath it furthermore what has been in a downtrend is starting to bend it's starting to turn and what we can see here is you know, that's a, you know, bar there, hits the 20, it's the 20 there. We've got rejection candles here. They're trying to push down to the 20, but it cannot, it cannot break down and close beneath it, okay? The, the 20 has flipped from being a roof here to being support there, okay? And then you can see price rallies up to the 50. It comes back down again to test, but once again, okay, look at that. It's just the, um, the lows are getting higher. It can't close beneath the 20 before it makes its bump up. It comes back down, and then we, now we can see that 20 period moving average acting as very nice dynamic support. Okay, so we've seen this very clear downtrend followed by a reversal pattern. 
followed by price getting the other side of the 20 period moving average. And then that 20 period moving now starting to act, okay, as support. It's flipped from being the roof to being the support. And then when she starts to see here, I mean, there's lots of rejection candles, okay, rejection candles, pin bars, engulfing candles, okay, bullish candles that are giving you the opportunity to, to basically to take a trade in line with what would be the new the new trend. And that's where, you know, how we can just very easily simply use that power of 20 period moving average to, you know, not only join a trend, but also to see when that trend is over and confirmation that that trend is over and a new trend is about to start. And we want to get on board that in whatever way we, we see fit. Uh, and so this, yep, this is just even more of the example that we saw earlier. Okay. This is the DAX. Okay. In a nice downtrend into its double bottom. Okay. As we said, Price then gets above the 20 period moving average and the as the 20 period moving average has started to bend and curl and now it's becoming dynamic support, okay? And as we can see, as the trade actually takes takes its way off there. And that's it. So, you, you know, you've got a couple of simple things, nice confluence of events, downtrend into a reversal pattern, getting above the 20 period moving average, 20 period moving average now bending, okay? And they're going from being, in this particular case, from being a floor to support. I know I've said that a few times, but the more times you hear it, the more it's gonna sink in, the more you're gonna actually be able to go out and see this on uh, charts yourself. Uh, you know, this is uh, just a, this, I think is short. Yeah, this was a shorter term example, okay? You know, but um, this was on the, the Dow, the 15 minute chart. We can see that's been coming into a nice trend. Uh, nice, it's been nicely trending up. We then get a, a one, two, three reversal pattern. And what I want to see is, you know, price then basically closes beneath the 20 period moving average. You can see it comes down, it drops all the way to the 50 period moving average. Then it bounces its way up to the 20 period moving average. But, but just look at this, okay? The blue 20 period moving average has now turned, hasn't it? It's gone from being here, all along here, it's support. But now it's gone, it's turned over, okay? And now it's gone from being support, and now you can see it's resistance. And also, you know, the, the price action, it, it gets up above it, but it can't close beneath it and actually falls down and collapses, okay? And it closes beneath the low of the previous candle, so it's a, it's a key reversal bar. So this is a case of, you know, this is telling you, you know, you've got a reversal pattern like a one, two, three, followed by, you know, the 20 period acting as, you know, flipping from being you know the support to the to the to the roof and you've got price action signal there okay and that is you know the short is on okay the trade is on you're short and in this particular case you can see how price just really collapsed down there from there right down to the 200 period moving average okay you know and as a general rule you know and this is this is very rule of thumb but very often you will see if if price does reverse like that and price does break that 50 period moving average it's not unusual for it to drift its way down to the 200 period moving average not all the time but it's kind of like they become kind of magnets and the same with 20 15 200 they be kind of come magnets okay i'm sure there are other buy programs around about the 50 and most definitely the 200 and all we're trying to do is utilize that for for ourselves but hopefully that that gives you a nice little example you know this as i said that's on a 15 minute chart how you know even across all time frames this kind of price action behavior starts to starts to come out you know starts to play itself out you know you're getting a confluence of events okay you're getting a reversal pattern followed by a flip and the 20 period moving average with some nice uh yeah uh price action patterns and that is a that's a very simple trade setup. Um, and here's an example. This is the euro yen on the uh, on the hourly chart. So you know what we're, what we're looking for here. Well, we can see price was in a nice move there, wasn't it? Okay, no bother at all there. Uh, and then price makes a nice high. Okay, but actually over the weekend, all right, it's uh, as towards the end of the week it drifts down, drifts lower. Uh, and then at the start over the period, okay, we actually start to see price getting beneath the twenty comes down to the 50 okay and then it pops its way up and this is this will be the monday morning start of the european session uh, and what we can see there is hopefully you can see there okay there's you know there's just the, the 20 period moving average has been a nice uptrend it's gone from being support it's now the roof okay and hopefully you can see that there's a few examples there okay there's two three candles there price is pushing up trying to push up during the during its one hour pushing up through the 20 but it can't close above the 20 all right, it closes beneath it. Furthermore, we've got lots of rejection candles to the to the north side. The you know the the twenty period has flipped, and now what we're seeing is bosh. 
price collapses and collapses strongly. You know, and that's that's you know, I I wish it always did collapse like that. Okay, doesn't always by any means, but what we're looking at is you know just seeing that once you get that, it's kind of like the you know the the it's confirmation that that reversal has happened, and actually people want to get on board and and, and join that particular uh, uh, join that particular trade. So. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, you know, moving averages get a bit of a bad rap in trading these days, uh, but but they can still be enormously useful trading indicators, okay, when it's kept simple. They can be used to help to confirm a trend and provide a, a simple entry tactic to join an existing trend, which is the, the 20 MA MAC entry. Or it can be used to confirm a reversal in the trend, and when we see the 20 period moving average act as either dynamic support or resistance after a reversal pattern. That provides us an early opportunity to enter what might possibly be a new trend. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, we utilize simple and robust risk management principles. So we've got a couple of minutes left. So why don't we have a little look at, you know, some one or two examples on live markets that have been showing up um, uh, at the moment. But before that, don't forget to join us next time, okay, at uh, Wednesday, where my colleague Marcus is going to talk about trading with exponential moving averages, which you might want to join and uh, learn from. Things like what is an EMA? What does the EMA tell you? Examples of how to trade with it. That's at two o'clock London time on Wednesday, November 25th. Check your inbox for the uh, webinar link uh, or head over to uh, Admiral Market's website where you can sign up and register for the sessions. Uh, and you'll find lots of analysis and education and resources on the AdmiralMarkets.com website. And if you want to contact us, you can do. You can do so at hello at admiralmarkets.com for your emails, youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets for the channel where you'll see this and all the other trading spotlight webinars, and facebook.com forward slash admiralmarkets global. I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that interesting. Just giving you a little bit of insight how you could just use the 20 period moving average to make nice, simple trade plans to join trends and to trade reversals. OK, and as I said, we've got a minute or two left. Just quickly, we'll switch across to the uh, to the charts uh, and just take a look at one or two uh, possible examples there that are setting up or have been uh, uh, recently. So just bear with us a moment and we'll switch across. Okay, hopefully, you know, you can still see my, uh, uh, hopefully you can still hear me, hopefully you can still see me, okay, and that you can actually uh, um, see the charts, okay, and what's going on. So um, let's have a quick look. We've got one or two um, examples. Let's have a look at, uh, yeah, let's have a look at pound against dollar on the uh, the monthly chart, because uh, I wanted to show different examples of different opportunities. So um what we can have a uh, what we can have a look at here is just just very simply as we're running a little short time. We were in a nice downtrend there, okay? We? We're in a nice downtrend there until what we can see is you know price you know collapsed down here. That was the the Brexit vote, and then what we saw is over a few months, price started to reverse and rally up, and then we got up to the twenty period moving average here. And then once we'd close back above the 20 period moving average after a real sort of rejection candle, which was the first time we'd been above it for two, two and a bit years. Well, just look at the price action of what happened once we'd uh, basically got above that 20 period moving average. The, the 20 MA, okay, which had acted as support, uh, sorry, as resistance here, now started to act as support, okay? And we saw what we saw was actually the moving average started to change. Uh, and then invariably we had a nice rejection candle there to buy off or effectively a second one or a third one and price actually rallied its way up to the to the uh, to the 50 period moving average that might look as a small move here on a chart there but that was about 800 pips that actually the pound against the dollar rallied up there from from that spot okay so there was plenty of opportunity there for a for a trader to get a little bit of piece of a uh, piece of that particular trade uh, and if we have a look at, uh, let's have a look at the four hour chart. Um, so last week, you can see here, uh, you can see here that, you know, price has been in a nice uptrend, hasn't it? Uh, and then what we can see is here during last week, price kind of fell down. Okay. It closed beneath the 20 period moving average. Let's see if I can zoom in here a bit. Okay. But then actually it closed back above it. All right. That was our opportunity. Okay. So invariably what we're looking at, let's get the old drawing tool. We're basically buying the next candle with effectively our stop beneath the low of the last two candles. 
uh, and hopefully you can see for yourself that actually price price rallied away next way and it's continued this week okay to hit its to hit its target so quite a, just a a simple little uh, example there and uh, let's have a look at very quickly because I said we're uh, appreciate we're always we're always very short a time here as always uh, could talk for all week about this um, why don't we have a look at something like uh, Kiwi dollar okay which has been particularly uh, strong uh, and what we see here is you know hopefully you can see that we've had um, Let's just look at this here. We can see price based here. Price started to get above its averages, and we can see the price has rallied up quite nicely and quite strongly. We can see that price came back beneath the 20 period moving average, but here at the start of the week, it came back above before it rallied. Then last week, it came back again, closed beneath the 20 period moving average before putting in the next trade there, okay? The next mecha entry there, stopped beneath the low, and as you can see, price has rallied up to hit its target earlier today. So um, I hope that's uh, given you a little bit of insight. I hope that's uh, helped you just to see how, you know, just, you know, you don't have to have your charts cluttered with lots and lots of different sort of indicators, okay? You can keep it nice and simple, ladies and gentlemen, and you'll find that there are trades either to join a trend or to use it to confirm the end of a trend that will be there to, to actually help you. Uh, as always, I wish you the best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I uh, hope you'll join me next Monday for our next session in the Trading Spotlight webinar. And for those of you who are around, please feel free to join me in Trader's Yard as well, where I'll be for the rest of the afternoon. Trade well and uh, take care of yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks.